Hello Grade 12s and welcome to another video from the Answer Series. In this video we are going to have a look at how we define work and how we use the formula to calculate work done. Just a reminder about where work fits in to the bigger picture of mechanics. So in Grade 9 you would have learnt all about forces and then a bit more in Grade 11 when you did Newton's laws. In grade 10, you learnt about the law of conservation of mechanical energy. Well, we are going to see how work creates a bridge between these two ideas and completes our understanding of mechanics, at least at school level. Work is not used in science in the same way as we use it in everyday language. It's not about, I got up and went to work this morning or I'm tired after having done a lot of work, or I don't know how to do this work. No. In science, we have a very specific idea of what we mean by work. If we have an object, like say this one over here, and there's a force acting on that object, and that object moves a certain distance, i.e. it's displaced, then we say that work has been done. Now, both force and delta x, the displacement, are vectors. So if the force vector and the delta x vector are in the same direction, then we can say that that f is fully responsible for moving that object. However, that doesn't always happen. More often than not, the two vectors are in different directions. So if we have a look at these two vectors here, then there's an angle theta between them. And that's going to be really important for you to be able to visualize what that angle is between the two vectors. As a result, it's only the component in the x direction that actually does the work on this object M and move it from left to right. Just a reminder, about work calculating components. If you want to work out the component in the x direction of the force f, you need to take this, the trigonometric ratio from this triangle. Here is the adjacent side, here is the hypotenuse f, adjacent divided by hypotenuse gives you cos. And so we have this formula f of x over f equals cos theta. Rearrange that formula and the x component in the, of f is equal to f cos theta. So now we can get to a definition of work. We're going to recognize two things that affect the size of the work. They are the force and the displacement. If the force is bigger, the work is bigger. If the displacement is larger, then the work is larger. These are direct proportions, and so we can say that work is equal to the product of these two vectors, but only their magnitudes, not their directions. We then get an answer for work as being F times the component in the same direction as the delta X is traveling multiplied by x, but because we're using magnitudes, work is a scalar. When you multiply two numbers together, you can only get a number, you can't get a vector out of it. Then we have a look at the way in which the units are organized. Force is measured in newtons, delta x is measured in meters, and so Newtons times meters gives us a unit of joules. Now, joules is also the unit for energy, which is where these two are going to come together, because work and energy, as we'll see later, are equivalent. Let's have a look at a couple of different arrangements of these vectors. In this one, delta x and the force vector are traveling in the same direction, force delta x. And if we're looking at the angle between those two vectors, 
the angle is 0 degrees. Cos of 0 degrees is 1, and so therefore our work value is simply f times delta x. Something else to recognize is that if you apply a force on an object in a particular direction, that object will accelerate if net equals ma. So that object will gain energy. Because it gains energy, the work done is positive. However, what if the force was acting in the opposite direction? Friction is a good example. We have a frictional force acting in this direction, we have delta x going in this direction, and the angle between those two is 180 degrees. 180 degrees, if we take the cosine of that, is minus 1. And so that object loses energy and the work is negative. At other angles, we have to take into account the theta, angle theta, between the two vectors. So in the first quadrant, we have f with delta x, and there's the angle theta between them. In the fourth quadrant, we have f traveling in this direction, going down like this, and so there is theta between f and delta x. What's important to note is that with both of these, the work done will be positive, because the cos of those angles will be a positive number. When we get to the second or the third quadrant, we have a different situation. Now the angle is greater than 90 degrees, as we can see over here, or even greater than 180 degrees, but each time the cos of an angle that size is going to be negative. Negative. And so we find that the work done is negative, which means that the object loses energy. Finally, when the force is at 90 degrees to delta x, then that angle between the two is 90 degrees. Between those two vectors, there's the force vector, here's the delta x vector, and so therefore we end up with a situation where it's cos of 90 degrees, which is zero, and sorry, no work is done. This is a good point for you to pause the video in a moment and to run through some questions and try out this equation for yourself. We have a situation where we've got a boy exerting a force F on a box, but three different scenarios. The first one he holds it, the second one he carries it a certain distance, and then he gets tired of that, so he pushes it across the floor. And we need to work out the effect of the force and the friction. In the second problem, we have an 8 kilogram box with two different forces acting on it in different directions, and we need to work out how big is the work done by the force and how big is the work done by the frictional force in each case. When you're doing problems like this, make sure that you've read carefully through. This making of a list is really useful because then you don't have to go back and re keep rereading the question, and then you go into your physics, choose the correct formula, do the correct substitution, give your answer with the correct unit. Try those now, and then come back to the video and have a look at the answers. Right, here are some of the answers to those questions. Firstly, um, with the boy carrying the box, holding the box, there's no friction, and so therefore there's no work in both of those um, first two scenarios. No work, because there's no frictional force. And also, with the first one, there's no displacement, so therefore the force does no work. That's when he's just holding the box. And even when he's carrying the box, the, his force is perpendicular to displacement, and so therefore there's no work. It's only once he puts the box down and slides it across the floor that we actually get any work done. He pushes it with 30 newtons for 4 meters, and so does 120 joules of work. 
In the same case, there's a frictional force of 5,88 newtons acting against him. The angle between those two is 180 degrees, and so therefore he ends up with a negative work, 23,52 joules, done by the frictional force. Work is always done by a force. In question two, it's important to be able to recognize the angles between the vectors. And so we have delta x going over here. This angle between the applied force and delta x is 20 degrees. And the angle between the frictional force and delta x is 180 degrees. So that is why we end up using 20 degrees here and 180 degrees here. In the last diagram, we have to make sure that we are working with all our vectors with their tails on the dot. There's the delta x vector. Here's the applied force. Notice how it's been moved from the original diagram. So there's an angle of 30 degrees between it. And here is the frictional force. And that angle is 180 degrees. And so we end up using 30 degrees here for the work done by the applied force and 180 degrees here for the work done by the friction which means once again friction ends up being negative. If you found this video useful give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the answer series your key to exam success.